I am Max. I'm Alex. And you're watching your army. Army, army of One TV. TV. <laughs> Play with exist. My name is Max Phelps, and I'm Alex Weber. Uh, we we've been doing this for it's it's basically been uh, a little over ten years. I, well, I don't I don't know about it. It's it's been yeah since so like <laughs> 2000. The, the core of the band, like or or what kind of turned into the band, started in. 2007, and that was me working with some other musicians under under a different name, and and maybe sometime around like 2008 or 2009, the name changed to exist. Alex joined yeah. probably a little bit before then, uh, and we've been uh, with our current other guitarist since around then to Matt Rosa. Um, so the three of us, I guess, are kind of the core of the band at this point. Um, we uh, we have two other guys that play with us live right now. And we have a different drummer on the album and a different drummer on our debut album who had been with us for a long time too. But yeah, I guess I guess right now the three of us are kind of yeah. the core of the band, Alex and and uh, Matt and myself. I mean, all of us are into a pretty vast majority of different types of musics and because we like all of those things. I mean, it's not like a, a forced thing where we're trying to put that into the music, but it's since we like it, we want to play it, and it's just going to naturally come out of us because of what we're into. I'm the primary songwriter, uh, but like, like I plan out most of the arrangements, and then uh, and then there's usually kind of a, you know, and although on this album there's a song that Alex wrote called "To Sever the Strings," um, and then you know there's there's it, there's a lot of input just from the musicians. There's this whole you know kind of second and third layer on top of that, which has to do with like how they play, how they react to those things. You know, maybe certain kind of parts that they add, certain melodies that they add, uh, and then you know some of the improvised stuff that falls on top of that too. I would say. But yeah. he comes to. Uh, the rehearsals with the songs pretty much already totally mapped out and we uh, you know we'll write them down in these uh, tablature programs just so that we can send them to each other and learn it easier yeah. that way but it's not something where we're getting in a room and composing the song on the spot we used to the, it's always been kind of like these preconceived arrangements for the most part, but we did like used to jam more. You know, like our, our first album, we played more as a band together. And it, was, it took longer for the, it's not that the songs took longer to write, they just came together a little bit more slowly yeah. and they would develop as we would play gigs or as we would rehearse. But even then, he still had the skeletons of the song pretty much already mapped out. They just slightly developed and changed over time a little bit. Yeah, and now it's kind of just, I guess part of it is like just Start. Well, part of it's been, you know, not having a, we didn't, we didn't have like an in-house drummer for a while. Yeah. Um, but also, also I think just, you know, we're all older now, you know, we're very, we're all busy, we're all juggling, we're, all, we're actually all full-time musicians and we're like juggling, all, you know, we, we teach, uh, or at least two of us, I guess, yeah, you teach at a college. Yeah. <laughs> um, we, so we just don't have do freelance much. work, so it's working around everybody's schedule, right? At this point, it's more of like, we come in and we record these kind of pre-production demos and we, it's almost like, we're a lot of the time that we're working now, we're not working all with our instruments at the same time, it's like we're yeah. sitting there, you know, maybe one of us is tracking something or mapping something Because for this last album, like, we did the pre-production that he was talking about, and throughout that time, it would be essentially like recording an album that, like, I laid down my bass bars, and then they laid down the guitar on top of that, all over top of uh, a drum machine, basically. They would, they would have, uh, you know, MIDI files. And uh, we didn't start playing the songs together until we started rehearsing for this tour. So <laughs> yeah, it just we just kind of came together yeah. part by part. And even like when we were recording the album, same thing. You know? Yeah, it wasn't. The performances are are very real. Like it's you know like it's yeah. not. We didn't do. There's a there's punch-ins for sections because we use so many different guitar sounds that it's like one section. You know, it, it, the next section might be orchestrated completely different in terms of like using three or four guitars and they're all using different tones than like what was happening a minute ago. You know, but uh, but the actual performances themselves are pretty. We kept it pretty real. You know, we. Didn't we didn't want to. We didn't really want to like quantize everything or, or over edit 
edited everything. You know, I think I think we didn't really nitpick everything being too perfect, even. Yeah, I mean, we've kind of always been more like that anyway, rather than trying to do the real computerized, metronomic, like techie kind of thing that a lot of bands are doing to kind of just keep it a little bit more organic. Um, so, I mean, and whenever we could, we tried to do the songs or the sections in a single take as much as possible. But like he was saying, you know, sometimes it just worked a little bit better to, you know, layer things like that. Yeah, there's a there's a theme kind of regarding, uh, I guess, like the overall theme is kind of this concept that we talk of. Uh, it was, it, it's almost hard to like sum up quickly, but it's, it's, it was this idea of... <clears throat> I guess kind of imitation versus innovation would be like the easiest way to put it. Um, you know, and, and we think in terms of the, uh, in, in the context of like a lot of art and music, you know, because that's kind of our world. So uh, maybe just this, yeah, yeah, I think that's the easiest way I can sum it up is like imitation versus innovation. And, and two title tracks actually kind of have a relationship from different points of view. Uh, it's like the opposite ends of the spectrum of yeah, that idea, yeah. where one is speaking from the imitator standpoint and the other is speaking from the you know, innovators. I mean, through a lot of uh, mutual connections we have through either people in the industry that we've met through the uh, various bands that we've played for, because he played for Cynic and he did the Death to All tours, and I played for Jeff Loomis near uh, the end of his touring cycle. So through that, we met a whole bunch of people. and. Uh, I originally met Steve, Joe, one of the a &R guys at Prosthetic when I was out with Jeff, and he also knew a whole bunch of people that also knew him, so because of these various connections, and sending Steve um, our first album, because we were when we tried to shop that out, just yeah. to see um, if he would take it. Steve used to work at uh, Century Media, well, up until pretty recently, he, he worked at Century Media, and so he was working with Alex uh, when Alex was playing with with yeah. Loomis, yeah, and so, and I, I think we had actually sent like our first album to him to, you know, just to try to, sh we were shopping it around, and so we kind of developed, I guess, you know, he, he knew who we were based mm -hmm. off of that, and so yeah, when it came time to do this, you know, we were sending it out again, and they were interested. Uh, no, actually, we haven't, this tour doesn't go through Canada at all, and it doesn't really go out to the West Coast either, it's kind of just this big circle that goes, went through, like, the, the farthest west, I think it went, is Oklahoma City, so mm -hmm. it did basically just a big loop like that. Right. Uh, so, no, Gore got some, well, I was going to be doing vocals for Defeated Sanity, who was already confirmed for this tour, and... Uh, we were already looking for a tour with Exist, and originally we were even talking about, you know, they were going to do a headliner for this material, and they were talking about taking Exist out. So, uh, so you know, we kind of tried to, when, when we heard that was happening, we seized the opportunity, and, you know, and, and I've, I've known the Gore Guts guys for a while now, uh, just because they've toured with me uh, when I was doing the Death to All tour. So, you know, I've got a good rapport with them, and um, so, yeah, I mean, it was... Uh, I think, you know, having the label yeah. helped a lot, you know, because it's they're kind of pushing that, too. We had a couple of other mutual connections that were mm -hmm. trying to help push that for us as well. Yeah. So. so, and then, you know, of course, Defeated had to drop off because of visa issues, which is unfortunate because, you know, it does, it does weaken the bill and everything, you know. Um, and, you know, also, I would have just liked to perform that yeah. material, you know. It hasn't seemed like it has really drastically negatively affected the bill, because the turnouts are still good. Turnouts are still good, yeah. It's still good. Yeah. But, you know, still, it would have been really <laughs> Gorgon, That's Gorgon's bringing that, though, not well, us, you know what I mean? Of course. Gonna, yeah. Of course. Um, but so, you know, it would, still would have been great to have them, especially since they were going to be playing music off of uh, the second half of their most recent record that he, was, that he did vocals on. Uh, so it would have just been a really good fit for the whole package. Yeah, that's basically that's basically it. And you know, I think we kind of lucked out in that sense. Absolutely. Because <laughs> uh, yeah, we just happened to be in you know kind of beginning the cycle for uh, for pushing the album when when that happened. You know, so. that really wasn't any of our doing. It just happened that, was, that they yeah. started working with Frost. That was Steve so. and EJ. Yeah. So uh, that well, that's pretty cool though, because like we all know. Maria Ferraro is like you know, the pile. pretty legendary. Yeah. yeah, so so that was kind of a happy accident. Yeah, accident. Yeah, accident. Yeah. And then, but as far as the and then it, like as far as the band itself, it's uh, it's 
either facebook.com slash exist, uh, existband.com, or uh, exist.bandcamp.com. Dot com, yeah. Yeah, I think because our Bandcamp address recently changed when uh, Prosthetic kind of took it over a little bit. But if you just Google exist Bandcamp, you'll be able to find it. Yeah, yeah. Or, or facebook.com just slash exist. Yeah. And, you know, our new album is out on Prosthetic Records. Uh, it's called So True, So Bound. Um, you can find it on, you know, all the regular digital music services and streaming. We also have it on CD and vinyl. Yep. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, check it out, and we hope you like it.